Today's scripture reading is a lesson about the gift, about the gift from God of his enduring love that gives us hope and courage and endurance. Bonnie's going to share that scripture with us now. From the book of Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and can character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Bonnie. You know, Father's Day gifts may be one of the things that most confounds our children. I mean, the standard used to be the tie, but, you know, wearing ties is sort of not becoming uh, as common. It's more the exception than the rule, as you can see today. <laughs> and have you noticed how, you know, Father's Day gifts often tie in humor? For example, here's one that I found online. Now, this appears to be a goat with a cigar-like carrot in its mouth on that tie. And then there's the mugs. I'm not sleeping, I'm resting my eyes. You know, dads work hard, they need a little rest, right? A little break now and then. And then there are the gag gifts, like this one. Miracle hair growth, mints for great hair and fresh breath. Uh, no comment on that one. But, you know, and then I found this other one that I, I really couldn't share with you today, but it was a flow chart to help the buyer understand their father's personality type so they could then pick the right gift. And I mean, really, I mean, can't we think for ourselves? We know our own father. We've, now there's flow charts. You can go online no matter what it is. If you don't know what to do, you can figure it out online. But, you know, when, when you think about it, most of these gifts and Father's Day gifts, they're, they're often gag gifts. And, you know, it's, that's okay. It's the thought that counts. After a long work week, you know, Dad needs a little laugh along with the love. And Father's Day is so, it's so different than Mother's Day. You know, maybe it's because dads are viewed as, viewed as serious and tough at times. But I think much to their chagrin and ours. We're not fooling anyone. We're just old softies when it comes right down to it. So when those we love give us funny gifts, it's a way of saying, we know who you really are deep down. A gentle, caring, loving guy, and we enjoy playing together. And I would hope that this is also the way that people view and understand God, our Father in heaven a gentle, caring, playful parent who loves his children and all creation and its beauty. I mean, I, you know, I think God is a happy guy. And we don't talk to him about him like that, really, do we? But I think he is. And yeah, he's got a tough job. But God is all about joy at the core. God loves his family and chose to be God in relationship with family. And he cho made that choice, right, for all of us. And, and today we remember then and honor fathers or those who are like fathers. The love of a father figure is an amazing and special gift. 
And it's important to acknowledge that God really has both mother and father traits. But today we're focusing on the gift of love and grace from that mysterious, loving, joyful, and playful Father in heaven. Today's scripture text is a story of unmerited love, a gift given by our Father. God is the one true model of a Father, our Father in heaven, who gives us His all and gives all to us. And He gave us His all, of course, once and forever in His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior from sin and death our link to God that keeps us with God because that's what sin really is, right? It's without the presence of God. That's our connection. And he gave us this gift so that today, Father's Day, for a moment, we realize that, that it's really not about gift giving as we typically know it, this relationship with God. It's, it's I think our call today is about regifting this gift of joy. This is the only time it's really okay to re-gift. And we urge you to do that. The gift is the gospel good news. This is the only gift where it's okay to do that. This is the gift that Paul is talking about here. And he says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person Though perhaps for a good person, someone might die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. And you know, I, I really tried to look for um, new things in this scripture. And something that I noticed when I read this, I don't know, to me it seemed like there was a little bit of dry humor in Paul's musings about Christ's sacrifice for us. I know that sounds weird to say it that way, but listen, he says, indeed, rarely will anyone die for the righteous person. You know, someone who dots every I, crosses every T, and follows the letter of the law. Though, perhaps for a good person, someone might die. And this is such an important text, and I'm, I'm not making light of it. But Paul wants us, you know, he wants to get our attention he wants to make sure that we get the point that God gifts us with access to unwavering hope. Not just to those who might deserve it, like the good and the righteous, but especially to all humanity when we needed it most. Our Heavenly Father in the deep seriousness of life and its burdens calls us to places of joy and yes, even humor and all the while is reminding us of his love and promise to always care for us, to always be there for us, even before we're aware of him, even before we understand the gift of grace. This is what our Father in heaven did and does, gifting us with love and grace and forgiveness. I'll say it again, even while we are yet sinners. A wonderful example of a father's sacrifice, love, and humor was shared last year through a radio program called StoryCorps. Anyone familiar with that program? Great stories. So this is a story of a daughter who, just days before her father died, told him what he meant to her. So earlier this year, when her father was in the final stages of lung and liver cancer, Ava Vega Old spoke to him for the final time. Leonardo Vega, 73, had been in hospice care at his home in New Jersey, so weak that he could barely muster the strength to answer his daughter's questions. But still, Ava asked them and took the opportunity to tell her father what he meant to her. She shares, when I was recording my dad, I was in his bedroom that he shared with my mom. There was the hospital bed in there. He had an oxygen machine, and he was struggling to breathe. Before they began, she asked him whether he still wanted to do the interview. Let her rip, her father answered. 
His end of the conversation consisted of not much more than monosyllables. Where was he born? Puerto Rico. How long had he lived in New Jersey? 65 years. I lived here all my life. The former factory worker worked long, hard days, the grave, graveyard shift, leaving for work just as Ava would return home from school, then return to work as a custodian later. And as Ava recalls, his life was defined by the work he did to support his family. And though Leonardo said he didn't know how he had learned, how he'd like to be remembered, his, his daughter at the time told him she knew precisely what she'd tell her own children. You were really loyal, committed, a committed father, and funny. My, my family's the kind of family, she says, that if you can't take sarcasm, forget about it. Like my wedding day. I remember walking down the aisle and my dad was walking super slow. And I'm like, Dad? And he says to me, shh, it's my day. I finally get rid of you. <laughs> when he turned, returned from the hospital to find hospice nurses awaiting at his home, he turned to her and said, I think they think I'm going to die. And while he continued to get weaker as he approached the end of his life, Ava says that she and her father had not spoken in depth about the prospect of his dying until this conversation she recorded for StoryCorps. So let's listen. I remember teaching me how to swim. Mm -hmm. I remember you throwing me in the water, and I was screaming and crying like I was going to drown. And I was like, no, I can't swim. And then you yelled at me, well, then just stand up. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. When we took him home, he came back to hospice care. And the nurses were there. He looked at me and he said, I think they think I'm going to die. And I said, well, if you feel differently, then do differently. But every day he got weaker and closer to the end. Do you think you're dying? Everybody dies. Up until that moment, we had not talked about him dying. Are you afraid? No. I wish it wasn't happening right now. What are you most proud of, Daddy? My kids. Your kids? My family. Mm. Okay, let me end it for now. I did the interview Tuesday afternoon, and he passed on Thursday night. You know, not for nothing, but my dad's a working class fella. He bought a home, paid off his home, and was able to die in his home with his family around him. For him, that was the pinnacle of what your life should be. And I think that he did achieve his dreams. This story of Leonardo Vega and his daughter Ava help us feel and understand in earthy, gritty terms the story of God and the people of God, the children of God. God goes to work on the late shift out of loyalty to his family. God is a committed, loving father with a sense of humor. God models enduring love and character, which gives us hope. This is God's gift through the life and death of his only son. It is in this gift received that we find spiritual life and health, real eternal life. And we come to discover the pinnacle of joy in this hope. Remember the lesson shared in Paul's letter. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace through God, with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. 
because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that's been given us. I'm sure that life was not always easy for Leonardo Vega working two jobs and late shifts. Yet he gave it his all because he loved his family. He loved life. And he loved to laugh. Let us boast in our sufferings. That is, boast in the hope and the promise received in Christ, who died that we might live abundantly, and even as we work those late shifts. Let us grow in character through the perseverance and endurance that we pull from the spiritual strength poured over us by the love of God, the greatest gift ever given by our Father to all the world. So now it's our turn to share the good news of hope, the good news of love and faith with folks that are either unaware or just uninterested. Do some regifting, friends. Do it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.